Hey guys, how you doing? My name is TJ and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started using Sublime Text once you've actually installed it and you are ready to get started working on your first project. So the first thing that you might need to do anytime that you are working on a new project is to actually create a folder. Now, this is something that you can simply do on your desktop by just right clicking if you are on a MacBook and the process should be a bit similar if you are on a PC as well. Uh, so for me, I just right click and I click new folder and immediately I can just name the folder, whatever I want. And I typically avoid having spaces in my folder names. So let's say that I had a project called like project one or something. Instead of doing something like project one with a space between it, I would do project hyphen one instead. Now, this is important and it comes in a lot handy later when you are playing around with the command line, but that's not the purpose of this tutorial. So <laughs> let me just focus on how to actually use Sublime Text anytime that you are working with your project folders and files. So now that we have a folder, if you double click it, you see that this folder doesn't have any actual files inside of it. So how do you open this folder using Sublime? Well. The first thing you have to do is to actually open Sublime. So for me, let me open Sublime Text. So now that Sublime is open, I can just come up here and go to File Open and go to my desktop and click on that folder and I go to open and that now opens that folder in the Sublime Text Editor for me. So the next question or the next step is, how do you create files using Sublime? Well, again, if you just come up here and go to File, you can click New File, and let's say that we want to create an index.html page. I go to File.new, and this is going to pop up here, and all you do is just type the name of the file that you want to save, then click Save, and I'm not going to use any shortcuts on my keyboard, so I'm just going to go to File, Save, this pop-up window where you can actually confirm the name of the file that you want to save and you see how right now it's showing that the place where this is going to save is your desktop but that's not where we want that file to be saved at we want to create that file and save it inside of project one so if you click here go to your desktop and click this drop down thing to now expand it Click on project one and click save and that is going to save this file into project one for us. So do you see how now in sublime text it shows that we have a index.html file and that file is this one here. So let me just delete this and something else that you also have to pay attention to is anytime you have unsaved changes inside of a file in sublime text. This, this thing up here is going to be like a round point like you see right now, but as soon as you save those changes, so let me click save. You see how it now turns into an X. So make sure that you pay careful attention to this because I see lots of people having issues like my code isn't working, my code isn't working. And then they kind of find out that, oh, they just actually didn't save the changes that they made. Okay. So make sure that you pay attention to that. now. I'm not going to sit here and create a bunch of HTML files, so I'm just going to use a website that is already created to kind of show you guys this next part. So I'm going to X out of here and I'm going to open up my actual old Roots Technology website, which is this one. And also the way that you can open HTML files is by just double clicking on them and they'll open up in the browser. So if I just double click on this. It's going to show you guys, you know, by the time you see this video, this is my old Roots Technology website and I'll probably have a new one up. But let me go back to Sublime Text and open this folder in Sublime. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to go back to my desktop and open this one here. Yep. So you see how now it shows all of those files there. So if I click on my index.html file, it shows you all of the code that is currently on that page. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is how to actually view two files at the same time without you having to, you know, just be going back and forth. Because most of the time, anytime that you are working on building a website or web page, you are typically going to be either looking at your HTML code or your CSS code and going back and forth between the two. 
But you don't have to do that because Sublime actually lets you to open up two columns. But first, let me just kind of show you what the current like workflow is before showing you this. So if I click down assets, this is where my CSS code is. So you see how now it's my CSS, but I want to see what's in my HTML. So now I have two tabs open, right? My HTML tab and my CSS code tab. So that means that as I'm like writing this code and I'm looking back and forth between the two, that I have to keep alternating between these two tabs. And one thing that you can also do is to just shuffle these as well if you want. But anyways, using Sublime Text, you can actually put these two files in two different columns that'll make it a lot easier for you to look at. And the way that you do that is coming up here to view, go to layout, and just click two columns. But you also have the option to do rows, a grid, three columns, etc. So right now I'm gonna click two columns and that is gonna open up another section inside of the text editor. And what you can do is to click and hold on the tab of the file that you wanna move over and just click and drag it over and then let go. So now this way, anytime that you are writing your CSS code, you can have your index.html open here. So it is a lot easier for you to see the HTML that you're actually targeting, all right? Something else that's gonna be important to pay attention to when you're working with Sublime Text is that you can actually find and replace. So for you to do find and replace, you can just come up here and go to find and click replace. And this now, let you type any type of keywords or etc. So let's say that I want to check every word that I have padding, right? So if I come in here and I type padding, this now finds all of the places where, you know, that I have padding written down. So let's say that I wanted to change every word that I have padding to margin. So I would just do the replace here and type margin. So now if I click replace, it'll just replace the first find, I mean, the first padding that it finds and replace it with margin. But if I wanna replace all of them, I can just do replace all down here. And the way that you exit this view is by just pressing escape. Now, if I just want to use find without really doing any type of replace, then just don't click replace in there, or you can just come back up here and just click find by itself. And these are the different shortcuts that you also have in terms of, you know, Command F, Command G, etc. Now, something else that I also want to show you in Sublime Text is that you can actually use it to quickly comment out any code. So if you just highlight this and you do Command Backslash, that'll now comment out this code for you. And this works in any programming language that you are using this text editor for. And this functionality typically comes with every text editor so this is something that you can do if you are using sublime text atom or any other one as well and again remember how i said anytime that you have unsaved changes in a file that at the top here you will see this round dot so that means that this change that i made in terms of commenting out this code has not been saved yet so let me do command s to save it and watch this turn into an x Right, so I just did command S and that round dot now turned into an X. Let's say that I delete all this code here. You see, it'll now be this round dot again. Let me just undo that. And I'm gonna undo those changes as well and save that. And that's it. When it comes to the basics of using Sublime Text to kind of write your code and just kind of see how things work, the main things that you will need is to open a folder. So typically you should actually create that folder on your desktop. I mean, that's what I do, but you can create it anywhere you want and then open up Sublime Text and just use this file open to now find that folder and to open it. And then you can also use file.new file to actually create a new file. So let's say that I wanna make a new file. So I have the option of typing the file name here and then clicking save. So if I do command S and you know, the main thing that is very important to like watch for is to just be wary of where the file is actually being saved. And that information is going to be in this drop down. Okay. So this is showing me all this now because I clicked that, but typically it might show up like this for you where it's showing you this where, 
and anytime that you want to expand that let me just click on this icon here on the right and this now shows you oh that this css folder is inside of this assets folder but you can also come here and just click on the drop down and again all of this is inside of the tdl20.github.io folder all right i'm not going to save that and that's it that was just a brief introduction to using sublime text and again sublime text has a lot more features that come with it but these are the main basic ones that you need to know to be able to get started and to start writing code and as you go feel free to tinker around and just play around with sublime text a lot more to start learning more about it on your own